I've gotten to the point that coffee is just like a formality at this point. Like it doesn't do anything. <laughs> now I just drink it as like a punctuation to like a sassy retort. In that dress? Hi, uh, <laughs> Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies and a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies. Do you have to mow now? The grass been that long all week and the day that I decide to take the last minute to film a video, that's when y'all wanna mow. Bad Movies and a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. I missed last week. That was the first week I've missed in a while. <laughs> because A, I wanted to take a little break and I had a little space in my schedule to do so. And B, just because it was Halloween and I wanted to get drunk and dress like a whore. All of which I did the way God intended. But I'm back to talk about the newest installment in the ever fascinating, that's the most neutral word I can come up with, series called after and they released the third movie called after we fell a movie that was in theaters for a total of like four and a half minutes that i was gonna go see in theaters like well ahead of when people started asking me to watch it but i think what happened is that they kind of released it in theaters and their entire demographic are people that don't really go to theaters even prior to covid related things so like nobody knew it was out <laughs> Nobody cared that it was out. And then after that, I just got like a deluge of, of lukewarm requests to, <laughs> to talk about, again, the toxicity between Tessa and Harden. That's what we're doing today. Uh, but before we get into that, we got some bills to pay. So I'm gonna send it over to Ad Roll Kenny. Ahoy. Hello, it's Ad Roll Kenny to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Glamnetic. They make magnetic lashes as well as magnetic liner that take the immense struggle out of eyelash application. When Glamnetic reached out to me, I was a little bit skeptical because I've tried magnetic lashes before. There ends up being this odd phenomenon where you have like two pieces of lashes just floating midair. <laughs> looks like your lashes are doing like a magical illusion, very mind freaky Chris Angel type situation. But when they said we make magnetic liner that applies your magnetic lashes, I said, okay, I am intrigued. So instead of messy glue and waiting for that to dry, you can do your liner as you would anyway, and then apply the lashes directly on to the liner that you did. There's no glue, there's no mess, which makes it really, really good for beginners out there. Each lash comes with six little magnets on there. So all you have to do is again, do your liner and then apply it on top. They have two different types of liners. There's the liquid liner that has like a brush kind of standard liquid liner formation. And then there's also a felt tip. Both are pretty straightforward. You just apply them on as you would any other liner. If you mess up, feel free to use the Glamnetic uh, so Clean Makeup Corrector Pen. Then once your liner's dry, you can just go in with your magnetized lashes. Now the lashes come with an anchor in the front and the back, which is like an extra magnet that if you want to use it to secure your lashes even more from the bottom, you can do that. Personally, I kind of prefer it without it because it makes the application one less thing to do. But if you're looking for extra security, then that's an option as well. Or if you just want more fullness, but it's super secure, they're waterproof. And because it's done with liner, if you ever want to change out or reposition your lash because sometimes you're like oh I think I got it too far inward and I want to move it outward or vice versa because there's not glue you just have to pick it up and then move it they have like 80 billion different styles of lashes 60 plus close enough so you're sure to find something that matches your style your mood or your eye shape perhaps the most impressive part is that each pair of lashes can last up to 60 plus uses I can maybe get a hot five out of any other pair of lashes on a good day. So obviously I have them on right now and I'll be wearing them in the rest of the video. These lashes would make amazing gifts for moms, sisters, or best friends, so feel free to stock up, especially because Glamnetic is giving us exclusive early access to their biggest sale of the year. So be sure to use my code Kenny30 for 30% off the entire site. So if you'd like to check them out, feel free to check them out down in the description box. Big thanks to Glamnetic for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. Okay, so last time we were here, we talked about a movie that I love with all my heart. I saw the devil. It's a masterpiece and a lot of people said that they kind of 
watch the movie after my video and then blame me for the deep feeling of regret and, and sadness after watching it. And literally, I spent the whole video talking about it. it's heavy. So only watch it if you think you can handle it. But if, you, if you'd like to check out my video on it, I will link that up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies and a Beat playlist. And I also have now a Good Movies in a Glam playlist. Again, tentative name for like movies that I actually like. So it's also there as well. Okay, so the after series. I've already done two videos on after already. When I talked about the first movie, I didn't really talk as much about the movie explicitly, but more so about kind of scrutinizing, you know, what is happening in regards to awful ramifications it can really have on particularly young girls' ability to have functioning and healthy relationships. I used after as kind of an example for that, but like most girl focused young adult, new adult books and media tend to fall into this like, he's a bad boy, but I can fix him with my pussy. You know, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of general romanticization of like very toxic relationships. And as a person that grew up reading a lot of YA and new adult and fan fiction and all those things, I was like, this is concerning. <laughs> Cause it really messes with your ability to understand what is like healthy. Now the second movie is equally as toxic, um, but I much prefer it. The first movie was PG-13. So theoretically you're opening up to audiences that may not understand the subtleties between this being entertainment and fantasy, and instead think of it as aspirational in regards to their romantic sexual relationships as they get older and go into their budding relationships in you know, high school, some middle school, you know what I mean? So like when you get to the rated R version, it's like theoretically everyone here understands that or is more inclined to understand that. So I'm all for it. If you just wanna watch some toxic and you understand that it's not something you really want in real life, but we love the drama, I'm all for it. <laughs> Which kind of leads me to this movie. It's really fucking boring. This whole series doesn't really have much substance outside of Tessa and Harden arguing. If you take out the toxicity, there's nothing left. And so this movie was way less toxic in regards to their relationship. But because of that, there nothing was really happening until maybe the last like 10 minutes. It got a lot, I was like, oh, okay, ghetto. But like before that, I was just like, this entirely too long walk to nowhere. All of the few fleeting things that I actually enjoyed about the series, they completely switched around, got rid of, changed entirely. And so it was just left with this like bare bones, pointless ass movie. Though comparatively, this is the least toxic they are to each other. There's not much to the story outside of that. It was like watching a long ass vlog, just seeing people do stuff that had no real like progression of storyline or events. If you somehow got on this video, but you're unfamiliar with After. After was originally a fan fiction turned novel about Harry Styles in college. Um, in the books, they changed his name to Hawden. I have never read the books. From what I hear, the movies venture off quite a lot from, as far as like the toxicity and all the bullshit going on, how awful Hardin's character really is. They tone it down a lot for film. If you wanna hear more about the book and or comparisons between the movies and the book, feel free to check out Amanda the Jedi's videos. She talks about the movies and the books, or you can watch this really cool video that I watched actually a while back from YouTuber named Full of Lit, and she read all of the books in the after series. I, however, will never, you got me fucked up. But the movies are notoriously poorly written, horribly acted, incredibly memeable, and pretty entertaining if you can get a good laugh out of it. Um, if you're watching it for like a legitimate love story, I find that fascinating. But this movie was so boring and nothing really happened, toxic or otherwise. It was so boring that it had me feeling existential. I was sitting there like, wow, this is how I just spent an hour and a half, two hours of my life on this earth. But because I didn't really have much going on in this movie until like the very end, instead it just felt like a very long drawn out setup for whatever the next movie is gonna be. And from what I understand, they've already been filming. They might've already filmed it already. Shit. <laughs> oh, that looks terrible. I tried to use a heart stamp. Oh my God. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put them everywhere so I can say it was it was art. It's not looking good. 
We'll figure it out. It's fine. This movie kind of took away what little it had. And it wasn't much. Like, they're really cutting it close to just being a blank screen. Regardless, here it is. This is After We Fell 2021. So the movie begins with a flashback to 2012. Tessa's parents are in a fight and her mom is kicking out her dad for his alcoholism and I think he lost his job or something because he was drunk. And I consider it not even talking about this because who wants to be that guy? Who wants to be the person that talks about the bad acting from the child actor? But if it were bad enough for me to notice a child actor's acting, <laughs> I gotta say so. You'll get him next time, tiger. Just not, just not this time. Back to the present. And if you recall, the estranged father is now back in Tessa's life. They found out that he was actually homeless and living on the street. And she offers to let him, you know, stay with her for a bit. And Hardin feels very powerfully about that. And he's like, I don't want you to hurt her. Probably still drinking. There's something, again, I've brought this up in the other videos where there's something very like, methodical about how he does everything with his body. He has this incessant lack of subtlety. I should fold my hands and lay back. Uh, speaking of his accent, I never quite get used to it. Every time a new after movie comes out and I watch it and he opens his mouth and I'm just like, what? Like, I still am struggling to understand that he, like an actual real person in life is British and he's not just a guy who's playing a British person poorly. I figured that the dad would be more of like a central conflict. Like the fact that Hardin doesn't like the dad becomes like the central conflict to the movie. It just kind of becomes one of many things that Hardin and Tessa argue about in this movie. And I think that's one of the big components about why this movie isn't particularly interesting because the fights have no central focus really. They, they're they about this, they're about that, they're about this, they're about that, but none of them actually drive the story forward. Like at least in the last movie, the fights were about their relationship. We had a central, issue but this movie is more so like they are doing and then they fight and then they find something else to fight about and then they find something else to fight about kind of feels like runtime padding they could have just not done this movie i think they could have added maybe an extra 15 minutes to the next film to get some like minor things situated but for the most part this whole movie was not necessary <laughs> then as if to just put salt in the wound they recast landon why did they do that? If you don't know, Landon was the only thing that I really enjoyed, <laughs> like legitimately enjoyed. I thought he was really cute and I thought he was like a healthy friend that wasn't, at least didn't seem to be like an adversary for her attention. He was just a good friend who is a man and I really liked him. And now they switched it to this other dude and he's fine, you know, whatever, like, but because Landon up until the point was played very like calm and collected, this guy super like peppy, like very like golden retriever. You can do it, white woman. Like, you know, it, it doesn't feel in canon with how he's been presented up until this point. So it was, ah, they just ruined everything. Speaking of recasting though, they recast a lot of people in this movie. Um, I don't know who a lot of people are until they actually say their names because they've recast everybody except for Hardin and Tessa and I think Hardin's mom. Everybody else recasts completely. Hardin finds out about Seattle. Tessa has been offered a job in Seattle. Well, you're not going to tell me that you're gonna leave me. Well, we were broken up for like three minutes, so I didn't tell you anything. Oh, wow, you're gonna have this whole life and it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> do you hear my stomach doing a beatbox? Coffee gave me bubble goods. Oh my gosh, stop. So Hardin and Tessa's dad end up kind of making amends or whatever. And the best way to uh, become friends with an alcoholic is of course, take them to a bar. And while they're there getting along, a man ends up coming up and being really gross and inappropriate as if he's very aware that he's in a movie. And so he's like, let me say something incredibly inappropriate and antagonistic. So let's start a fight. Later, Tessa comes to pick them up at the bar and she's like, 
why did you take the alcoholic to a bar? And for some reason, this turns into like a sweet moment for them. <laughs> He's an alcoholic and so are you. Two alcoholics walk into a bar and then they start f***ing. Like what? If you want my review on the sex, <laughs> much like the sex in every other movie for this plan. I did notice that for some reason this movie is a lot more prevy to using very loud and aggressive pop music. The music is incredibly loud and distracting. It's not bad. Some of it is pretty good, um, but it doesn't really fit any of the scenes, especially when they're in a sexual context. It just feels like the whole movie is a very long, soft core indie pop PMV. <laughs> the dad decides to leave after that. I'm not particularly sure why. He just feels like he overstayed his welcome, maybe with the fight at the, at the bar. Now that that's done, essentially we don't really come back to this conflict a lot. Like at some point he comes back into the house, but that's about it. So instead, the new conflict that we got to talk about is Tessa going to Seattle. Now this conflict is the one that's perhaps the most befuddling for me because I don't understand why it's a problem or why it's a conflict. Because the excuse that Hawden uses for why he can't go to Seattle is because he wouldn't fit into the flashy lifestyle of Seattle. When I think of flashy American cities, Seattle does not come to mind for me. I think New York, I think Miami, I think LA, Vegas. Seattle, Seattle. <laughs> Not so much. To be honest with you, I think more of like sweaters and overpriced coffee. But he's going on about how I don't have anything in Seattle. And I'm sitting here like, well, what do you have here? I don't know if he's still in college because the whole movie, we don't see him going to class. We see Tessa going at least once. His family, for the most part, are all in London. He's not particularly close with his father. So he's not particularly close with their whole family, like his stepbrother. I don't think they even really like each other. I don't think his friends and him even like each other, like fundamentally as people. He don't have a job here as far as I'm aware. And as we'll find out later, he's actually been offered a job in Seattle by Tessa's boss, Vance, who is a family friend of, of his. So theoretically, he has a better chance at things <laughs> in Seattle. And so now that the opportunity presented for them both to go, like, I don't have anything over there. Oh my God, that. What? <laughs> but anyway, sure. But Hardin doesn't tell her that he's been offered a job in Seattle. Instead, she has to find out from the also recast uh, fiance of Vance, who used to be a secretary and now is his fiance. But she spills the bean about Hardin actually being offered the job. Um, they bicker about how they're keeping secrets from each other. Uh, and then they leave it there. One day Hardin runs into a friend of his while they're all out to dinner, him, his step parents, his stepbrother and Tessa um, and stop by to talk to her, catch up with her. And Tessa gets jealous, which is, to me, it didn't look like they were particularly flirtatious. Like she was there with her parents. So I don't know why she was like, oh, he's, he's using words with women, but that's the foundation of their relationship. So I'm not surprised by that because a waiter actually comes over to take her order. Um, and he seems to be actually flirting with her a bit as if like Hardin has like a, like a, like a sixth sense. He's like, okay, let me get up and be an asshole. Wait, let me get up and be an asshole. And he like bumps into him on purpose. It's so Wattpad passive aggressive. Did I mention that? Not only was this a fan fiction, this was a Wattpad fan fiction. Um, and I feel like there's something quintessentially worse about that. <laughs> but later this tension escalates into them having sex in the hot tub. Her poor pussy. I chlorine will f your up. Just a pussy crime scene. Just the yeast infections and UTIs for some Vienna sausage flavored dick in, in like warm bacteria infested pool water. Disgusting. <laughs> Post coitus. <laughs> There's something so funny about the word coitus. I need to use it more often. They end up having a post-coital conversation about whether or not Tessa had ever had feelings for Trevor from the last movie. Are you moving to Seattle for Trevor at all? And she's like, no. Okay, did you ever have feelings for Trevor? I mean, there was a moment and before she can even like elaborate on that at all, he just like gets up. He's like, I wanna hear this. And I'm like, you know, 
Don't ask questions that you don't want the answer to. And now that they're fighting again, Tessa ends up going on a walk by herself and she ends up running into the waiter from earlier. Um, and he's like, oh, I'm off work right now. Do you want to get a drink at the bar? And she's like, okay. And while she's there, here comes Harden with the Asian girl from earlier. I guess to rub it in her face, there's other people that might want him or whatever. You remember Robert, yeah, right? Yeah, I remember Robert. I'll do an old fashioned actually. I'm off actually. Ew, it's so unattractive. It's so, like, does this do it for you guys? I don't even think I would have liked this in my like peak. I love toxicity. This, he's so annoying. <laughs> Like he's so annoying. Comes in with the Asian girl and she starts talking and she's like, oh, my girlfriend loves Seattle or loves New York or they're just talking about cities or whatever. And that's how we know she's part of the LGBT community. <laughs> no one's gonna get that reference but me. I, I love women. I love meow. And people are really tired of the LGBT community. And has a girlfriend and apparently wasn't hitting on Harden because of that, um, which, they never established that she doesn't like men. So I don't know why she just said, oh, okay, lesbian. But beyond that, this is such a strange scene because again, Harden's being this like very annoying, pissy poo poo f baby. And even in the few situations in which his attitude is warranted, he still somehow is so f unlikable and poorly acted. And regardless of the circumstance, because of that, I'm never on his side. I never agree with him, even when he's right. But anyway, to make hard and jealous, Tessa hits it off with the waiter. And she's like, I don't wanna come with you. I'm gonna continue to flirt with this guy in front of you because it'll piss you off. Nothing feels like an event in this movie. <laughs> like, I feel no tension. Even the ooh burn that I think that she was ultimately going for is just like another vague happening on the screen. So Tessa continuing to talk to the waiter, he gives her his number in case, you know, she's ever single, uh, which she keeps. And this is what I'm talking about. She shouldn't have kept it. That's really inappropriate, but also because I hate Harden so much, you know, I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> so I agree with Harden. <laughs> Harden. Harden finds the phone number in her things, which starts another argument. We're friends from work. We don't want to be your fucking friends, okay? What the f was that? It looked like his neck was acting, but his face wasn't. Again, I've asked this question of like, is he is, is he someone's son? And apparently, people told me that he's someone's nephew, somebody in Harry Potter's nephew, and that's how he's been breaking into acting. Oh, nepotism! You never fail. And they argue about her going to Seattle and about her talking to other guys and about him. Blah, 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 you blah, blah, blah. like they both have points. But the problem is, regardless of whose points I favor, I don't care enough to watch y'all argue. They make up, they argue, they make up and argue. Eventually she ends up in Seattle. At that time, they're on good terms now. They have phone sex, ew. They get into another cycle of making up and arguing because Hardin has a nightmare that she ended up having sex with the random waiter. And I'm like, Ain't she in a new city? Like what? She's nowhere near the waiter. Okay, but that made him paranoid enough to take a flight all the way over to Seattle just to come visit her unannounced. And then around this time, I just started to tune out. Like nothing was actually happening. And because I take notes during film, when I feel like nothing's happening, I don't have really anything to input. I just don't write anything. I went a full like 10 to 15 minutes without writing a singular word. At some point, they f in there, there's a pregnancy scare, they get the morning after pill. The only subplot that actually gave anything of interest happened within the last like 20 minutes of the movie. Vance. Vance is Tessa's boss. Vance is also Hardin family friend. So Hardin's mom knows Vance. He's also British in this movie, which he wasn't before, if I recall correctly. He's just suddenly British. And he flies into London because suddenly Hardin's mom is getting married and everyone's super excited they're gonna go to her wedding. The night before the wedding, Hardin sees his mom smashing Vance on the kitchen table, on the kitchen sink. Even worse, you wash dishes there. Vance has a pregnant fiance and Hardin's mom is getting married. Ooh, the ghetto. Oh, the ghetto. We are old now, baby. I was like, were you even trying to not get caught? You're in the most central 
epicenter of a home. You're just like the kitchen, the living room. You weren't even trying. You have a whole bed with a door. Let's f where people get up in the middle of the night to get water. <laughs> like, like y'all couldn't even get a hotel. Again, how ghetto. Traumatizing also, cause like your son again comes in to see you fucking where he gets his dishes to eat cereal in the morning. She does end up getting married the next day. They don't say anything about it. Vance's pregnant fiance and, and Tessa have this very odd conversation about how she always knew and that she's just gonna forgive him. What she says is that she's gonna forgive him because they have a history Bitch, and you're carrying his giant watermelon head ass baby. And he's like, well, they do have a history. The history apparently is that Vance is actually Harden's real father. Dun, dun, dun. And that's it. That's the movie. There are some other like little storyline plots that I kind of skipped through because they skipped through it. Honestly, they just kind of whizzed past it. I think uh, Tessa's dad breaks into the house to get some money to pay off gambling debts. Uh, Tessa isn't sure if she's able to have kids. Harden turns down a drink. Apparently that means he's no longer an alcoholic. And yeah, that's the movie. It was awful. Like awful in a way that's actually just inexcusable. <laughs> like the other movies, again, there is some entertainment value here. Maybe, <laughs> have they heard too much with the internet talking about how toxic is this? But I understand that. And I understand that it feels like you're being pulled in many directions, but please rest assured when you're making content for adults, and the core foundation of the story is the toxicity of that relationship. You can't take that out <laughs> because you don't have anything left. <laughs> and this movie is what is just the, the exoskeleton of, of what this could have been. Again, from what I hear, the, the third book is much more, the books in general are much more just all over the place and toxic and a mess um, and entertaining, to be honest with you. But this, it was just like, Nothing happened. I sat there for an hour and 40 minutes just watching the world pass by. Honestly, until we found out about the mom's affair, that was literally the only thing that was interesting at all that happened the whole time. After We Collided is awful, but I would always recommend people to watch that movie because it is so awful. There's so many memes. There's so much like the bad acting is bad, but it's like, we can have a fun time with it. There was no fun. There was nothing happening. It was just them having reduced fat sex and yelling all the time. I'm like, what? That's all for today, folks. I don't like my makeup at all. <laughs> Nothing is even, cause it was just chaos, but my eyelashes look good. So shout out to Glamnetic. If you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Um, if you have other bad movies that you think I should check out, feel free to put those down in the comment section and I will see you guys next time.